Bonnie Jackson. He serves on the House Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committee and is also a former White House physician. Uh, so both of those committees are going to be consumed with analyzing what's uh, what's transpired in Afghanistan in the months and perhaps years to come. Give us your take as you sit here tonight. Uh, what do you think about the way that uh, the, the administration handled the U.S. drawdown of forces there? Well, John, it, it's unbelievable. This is just an unmitigated disaster. It's a disaster of our own making. When I say our, I mean the Biden administration. They could have handled this a thousand ways. I saw a four-star general talking the other day, made a great point. He said he could have given this job to any junior lieutenant he had on his staff, and they would have done a better job planning this than our top brass at the Pentagon and the State Department have done in this. It's just unbelievable. We are in a position right now where we've got only 2,500 out of potentially 15,000 American citizens that are stranded essentially behind the enemy lines uh, with the Taliban and ISIS roaming the streets looking to kill people. They're stranded there now. They're essentially hostages. They're going to be some people that are going to keep that are going to die from this, from the, the, the president's inability to make a decision. We do not have a commander in chief right now. We are in a in, we are in a crisis right now. It's a national crisis and it, it's a big national security issue for us. It's going to it's going to haunt us for years to come with our reputation. And I, I just I fear it's going to get much worse before it gets better, John. I'm just really worried about what we're going to see here. One of the frustrations that many Americans have had with the administration is the inability for them to give straight answers. President Biden uh, said that he was unaware of any Americans who have not been able to get to the Kabul airport when, in fact, there are dozens of cases that have that have come to the, uh, the surface. And that is probably only a small fraction of those who would like to get there. Then there was this conflicting exchange, uh, the president's um, assessment of the situation uh, versus that of his Pentagon spokesman. Listen. Let's put this thing in perspective here. What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with Al Qaeda gone? And why did we have troops there for 20 years if there's no national interest in Afghanistan? We had a, we had a significant interest in being in Afghanistan to our national security 20 years ago. Uh, you've heard the president talk about this. The the, the goal was to uh, to defeat, decimate Al Qaeda, also to prevent. Al Qaeda from launching attacks on the homeland from Afghanistan. And we did that. We did that, yes, for 20 years, Congressman. But what happens now? Al Qaeda is back in Afghanistan. Al Qaeda is there. The Taliban's there. ISIS is there. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of terror groups that are going to gravitate toward this area. We're going to see Americans that are going to be held uh, for, for ransom, that are going to be held as hostages for ransom. We're going to see Americans that are going to be killed. Uh, because these what they, that's what these terrorists do. It's going to be horrible, you know. And I, I have I have citizens from my district that are trapped over there. I have a mother and three and three children that are trapped over there right now. And I'm not the only one. I'm talking to Congress congressmen and congresswomen in, in the Republican conference all day long, every day. We're all scrambling to try to figure out how to get our citizens out of there. There are people all over this country right now, John, that are putting together flights with extraction teams and trying to get them over there, private citizens, to do the job that our government can't do. And, you know, we've been struggling with that today, too. You can't get you can't communicate with the State Department, with the Department of Defense. You can't figure out if you get an aircraft and you have the money and the crew to get over there and pick some people up and get them out of there. How do you get approval for them to fly in? It's unbelievable. This is just complete chaos. And this cyber attack, John, I mean, the State Department can't afford for this to be happening right now. Was this coordinated? This has something to do with what's going on now? I know it happened a couple of weeks ago. What information did they get? Did they get information on all these special immigration visas? Do they have these people's names now? Do they know the American citizens and where they're at there? I mean, God knows what information they got from this or how this is going to play out to continue to make this situation worse. So the, the State Department, the Department of Defense and the Biden administration have failed miserably, miserably. And when I say that, I want to point out that I, I absolutely respect the, the job that the American military is doing over there. It's not it's it's not the military members that have failed. It's the leadership that has failed. They failed the military members and they failed this country. The, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Austin, said he doesn't have the resources to get Americans out. Uh, I'm reminded of Dunkirk when British, um, uh, the, the British government and, and Winston Churchill employed civilian fishing vessels uh, to go get British troops who were st uh, stranded at Dunkirk. The New York Post has this take on the president. And then the, the headline uh, a piece from Ryan Crocker, the former ambassador there, why Biden's lack of strategic patience led to disaster. The Atlantic headline, 
This is not Saigon. This is worse than Saigon. Congressman, final thoughts. This is just this is definitely worse than Saigon. And I'll be honest with you, John, this is all leading back to something I've been talking about for a long time is Biden's cognitive ability. I honestly don't think that he's being read into what's going on. I think that there's a shadow presidency right now. I think other people are pulling the strings. They're making the decisions. I think he legitimately looks like sometimes he actually doesn't know what's going on or he hasn't been told what's going on. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're withholding information from him because they don't trust him either at this point. I'm sure that they see him on a daily basis. They see how what, what kind of cognitive issues he's having. And they probably don't trust him to have the information or really think he can make the decision. So somebody else is making these decisions. And we, it is a absolute disaster. President Biden, at this particular point, I honestly think he needs to resign. He absolutely needs to move on and let somebody else who potentially capable of doing this do the job because he cannot do it. That would be the vice president, Kamala Harris. That's right. And I'm not sure she can do it either. But at least somebody else has to try at this point because he's he's failed miserably. He's proved to the entire world that he's incapable of being our commander in chief. He is not up to the job. Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson, who is a former White House physician. Congressman, thank you. Thank you, John. We'll have more on the 